like the pop artists, and Sync has also sought to set themselves apart as a different boy band. When you see them, they can't sit still. They're so excited. They want to move to the next level. They're not just happy singing pop songs. We work and we do it with passion. And I think that's something that you'll notice about us is, is, the, is the passion that comes, you know, with what we do. That passion developed early on, as NSYNC boasted five unique personalities, all from humble beginnings. For Chris Kirkpatrick, life in America's Rust Belt was a struggle right from the very beginning. My uh, mother and father were separated when I was like a year and a half old, and I was living with my mom. He was actually mimicking music before he could speak sentences, very truthfully. It scared the heck out of me. He taught me like how to play chess and all these cheesy magic tricks and that kind of stuff. Chris was very much like he is today, real high energy, real funny, all the time. I grew up very, very, very poor. We were trying to work our way up with all the food stamps and everything we had to get to low class. That's how poor we were. It was rough because, you know, we never had anything. I didn't have the money at the time to put him through college, and his father lived down here, and he, he offered to let him come down here, and he'd help him get his schooling. My dad said, come back down to Orlando. There's some great schools if you want to go into music or acting. So I was like, all right. Meanwhile, another world away in Brooklyn, New York, a young Joey Fatone was a handful. I guess I was a little rambunctious kid. I went to Catholic school. It wasn't an all-boys Catholic school, but it was guys and girls. I was like two blocks away from my school, so it didn't matter what kind of weather it was. Walked from my house to Catholic school. He had a very, very uh, innate talent to dance right off the bat. I mean, anything he watched on TV, he was very, very subject to follow. My dad used to sing in a group called the Orions. It was a, an old 50s, 60s kind of group. So I was raised with 50s, like do out all those kind of groups. My wife moved me since the day we were married to, to Florida. She already had in her mind that somewhere or another we were going to come to Florida. It was a family thing. All of our, my mom, dad, brother, sister, all of us moved to Orlando, Florida. It's because of the the weather, I guess, and everything else. And it was just about time we had a different change of pace, I guess. At the same time, in Washington, D.C., a young, shy Josh Chasse imagined life as a builder, not a singer. I actually wanted to be either an engineer or an architect from very young. I was always building things. Regular kid, went to school like everybody else, was part of the football team and, you know, the little leagues and the peewees and all that stuff, just a normal kid. I, I went and did a talent show off a dare. I was like 12 years old and I went up there for $20 and sang a song and I walked out of there with first place. Josh Chazé actually came to me because he had a friend who was a Mouseketeer. So he was coming over, he called me and said, could I come to the open auditions? So they came just to watch and I kept noticing JC standing over there and standing over there and he seemed like the typical boy next door. I said, would you be interested in auditioning? And yeah. It was my first audition I'd ever gone on in my entire life and got hired on the spot. Acapella, he sang for me. And he sang like nothing I'd ever heard. It was the first audition and he got it. Guy looked at me dead in my face that day and said, look, I'm calling you to the finals, but I can pretty much tell you right now that you might want to start looking at places down there because as far as I'm concerned, you got the job. Three guys were on their way to Florida, where they would hook up with a deep-voiced mama's boy from Mississippi and a sweet-singing Tennessee native. And sync comes when we return. For audition, Justin would be the very best. Justin was a total pro, the most talented triple threat that I found, acting, singing, and dancing. Justin was a 10 all the way across the board. I grew up in a countryside setting, you know, where I could kind of get out and, and be myself. Justin was born in, in Memphis, Tennessee. Before he could talk, he would he would sing, you know, hum along with the music. I mean, and he always had perfect pitch and everything. Memphis was kind of tough for me because it was just a lot of racial tension, and I'm just not with that. I live next to my grandparents, so all of my family, uh, when I was very young, I grew up close to. Justin's grandfather on his father's side is a pastor, so he grew up in the church, always participated in, you know, all the activities that went on there, but especially the music program, because he was, already had such a natural ability to sing. I grew up singing in church, and um, that's where I really got, you know, my voice and my inspiration. From Millington, Tennessee, welcome 11-year-old 
Justin Randall. When he was 11 years old, he auditioned at a mall and won a place on Star Search. Country music was pretty much the thing to do, so he was at that point in his life singing country music. I said my hands are sweaty and my knees are weak. I can't eat, I can't sleep. He found out during the course of the Star Search competition that the Mickey Mouse Club auditions were going on. He competed on Star Search, which subsequently didn't work out very well for him as far as Star Search goes. Anna. Nardona gets four stars, a perfect score. Our challenger, Justin Randall, receives three and a quarter stars. But he wasn't disappointed because he was going to have the opportunity to audition for Mouse Club, which he wouldn't have had if he would have won on Star Search. Come here, give me his handshake, pal. Good luck, partner. Personally approved by top management at Disney, J.C. and Justin honed their showbiz chops on the Mickey Mouse Club. They performed alongside two future megastars. A wide-eyed Louisiana native who loved to dance and sing, named Britney Spears. Get that thing away from me! Look, I said no, okay? I wouldn't date you if you were the last boy on the planet! And a pint-sized power balladeer out of Pennsylvania, Christina Aguilera. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> Why do you throw pies, Tammy? I guess for fun. It's never been a big deal around our house. What do you mean? Well, see, my parents are clowns. We throw pies all the time. At dinner time, on vacations, uh, family reunions. It's kind of the way we show our love to one another. <laughs> I just remember the first time I heard, you know, Christina sing or Britney perform. All of a sudden, ma, ma. People sleep on Britney's voice. They think she's such an entertainer, but don't sleep on her voice, man, because she's loud. Christina, the only songs she would sing for the show, like when she auditioned, she was singing Celine songs, Aretha Franklin songs, and Whitney Houston songs, and that was it. While JC and Justin got their training from Disney, Joey Fatone was getting it from high school music teacher Keith Galasso. I first met Joey Fatone when he was a freshman in chorus. And uh, that year I found about four or five guys that I wanted to put together as an ensemble. And I put them together and they started singing, singing together and they sang together for the next four years of high school. But when one big moment came, Joey was nowhere to be found. Everyone in wanted to make Allstate. And we worked really hard because they have to take a musicianship test and a sight singing test. So we worked real hard and Joey was doing real good at that. And when it came time, we had to go take a test on Saturday morning. And when we get there, there's all there but in the Fatone. <laughs> so we kept looking and looking. He missed the test and I found out later that he overslept, you know. But that's not typical, Joey. But he wanted to go so bad for some reason, he just did not make it up that morning. Around that time, Chris started singing in one of the local theme park shows. Through one of my friends that I'd met, he said, they're having auditions for this thing called the Hollywood High Tones at Universal Studios. Would you be interested? I was like, sure, I'll try it. I was uh, in high school, just graduated, and I was working at Universal Studios. And I've known Chris because he worked at the Hollywood High Tones, and it was the same place. It was around the same venue. I'd met Joey because he worked over at the Beetlejuice show, where they were all dressing up in these monster outfits. By August of 1995, the Mickey Mouse Club was over. J.C. returned to Maryland and began thinking about college. That's when Chris was introduced to a former blimp entrepreneur who had a mind to make it big in the music business, Louis J. Perlman. I met Lou Perlman through a friend of mine, and he said, you know, I'm looking for a group of guys that I want to put some money behind and back. And I was like, yo, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I was calling around. I said, you know, I need a voice. I need somebody that can just, you know, wail. And I called all these people, and turns out the only name that came back to me was Justin's name. Chris gave me a call, and it was just like, yeah, man, you know, why not? And uh, I was like, you know what? I got this friend who I did a TV show with. He's, you know, he's very musically creative, and I think he'd be an asset. Went down there, met him. We clicked right away. Huh. Three of us went to a club one night. We were yeah. talking about things. You know, we said, we could do this as a trio, you know, whatever. We could work this out. We can get this done. We're over there, and dancing 
in the middle is Joey Fatone. Now, I've known Joey since the first day I moved to Orlando. He was one of the first people I met. I've known JC now for like 10 years. Ever since he got on the Mickey Mouse Club with some of the people that were on the Mickey Mouse Club, went to my high school. And that was like a really weird moment because he knew me, he knew JC, and I knew JC, and JC knew him, but you know, it was like a triangle. None of us all knew that we knew each other. Well, I was like, what are you doing down here? I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm starting to, you know, we're starting to group. And I was like, well, if you need any singers, let me know. If you're looking for somebody, you know, to sing like a baritone, second tenor, let me know. I mean, I would be interested. So then Chris gave me a call the next day. And that's how it happened. Watch out now. Yeah. Our original record deal that we signed with Lou Perlman was four of us. And Lou was like, you know, this is great. This is great. You know, I've got the group. I've got four guys. You know, this is what I need. You know, we were like, you don't have a group. You know, we'll sign the record deal with you, but we're not finished. We need a bass. That's when uh, me and my mother got in touch with my old vocal coach. And he said, I know a guy who's perfect for what you want. He's got a true bass voice, and he lives in Mississippi, and his mom will never let him do it. We were skeptical, you know, and um, we discussed it and uh, decided that we had to go check it out. And we did, but not really expecting to let him do it. I think the first time she heard us sing together, that it finally clicked in her head. We just said, oh my goodness, you know, this is real. Here we go. Here we go. voice and just brought it all together. It was just like bang, 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 bang. Everything hit one after the other. It was just amazing how our how our voices clicked together. We instantly hit it off and I just knew then that it was gonna be huge. Everybody was, you know, just kind of together and in and, and, and sync. Coming up, the boys find fame, but not at home. It was great because you go over there and it was just so huge and just now on board the group's lineup was set. But before they could start recording, touring, or rehearsing, they needed a name. So who hit on NSYNC? Justin's mother. We were trying to think of something that represented um, the kind of thing they wanted to do with the precision dancing and five-part harmonies. Something to represent how in sync their sound was. My mom said, you know, you guys sound really in sync. You know, when you sing together, you sound really in sync. And we were just like, why not? We were messing around with the names and we found out that the last letters of, you know, our names actually spelled in sync. So it was like, well, now we got to use this name. It's, that's it, you know, it's in sync. If it was Lynn Harless who came up with the name, who owned the name wouldn't be so clear. But that would come later. Now, business manager Lou Perlman sought to put in sync on the same path to success the Backstreet Boys were on. That path began not in the then pop resistant U.S., but in Europe. Perlman hooked the fellas up with Johnny Wright, who'd steered new kids on the block and color me bad through their boy band paces. Perlman's transcontinental inked a deal with BMG Germany, and the lads began preparing for their overseas career. We would rehearse every day in this like 110 degree warehouse where we'd learn how to dance. Well, I was learning how to dance, other guys could dance. But then once we got a record deal, we went over there and recorded our first song, I Want You Back. I want you back. went over to Europe, you know, it's a whole other world over there. You know, we broke over there and had a number one album, and everything was just, everything just shot off like a rocket, man. It was so fast. It was nuts. It was almost like a, a dream world to us. We'd get on the plane, we'd fly over to Europe. As soon as we get off the plane, there were a hundred girls waiting in the airport. They were screaming and yelling, sign and sign and picture, picture. We get over there, like, hey, 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 what's going on? This is crazy, this is crazy. Everywhere I go in Europe, hey, that's it, that's in sync, that's in sync, that's in sync. Overseas, in sync would win gold records in Germany, European best newcomer honors, and millions of ardent fans. But no one in the U.S. even knew they existed. It was so hard to explain to our friends and our family what was really going on over there because it's like you got fans following you left and right over there cars following us selling hundreds of thousands of albums and then we come back and we're like yeah we're doing this we're doing that and they're like yeah whatever they didn't believe us half the time 
it was great because you go over there and it was just so huge and just fanatic. And then you'd come back home and just go out with your friends, you know, um, hang out in Orlando by yourself, you know, you go to Disney World by yourself and not even get bothered. We get off the plane, go back about our regular lives, you know, go to the mall, hang out, go to movies, uh, do things that, you know, regular people do. Nobody'd stop us. That was kind of good for me. We come back home, just chill, we're normal people. But those days of stateside anonymity were short-lived. By early 98, the Backstreet record had blown up, and so at the end of March, Instinct put out its first record, which caught fire soon after with the release of Tearing Up My Heart. It's tearing up my heart when I'm with you, but when we are apart, I feel it too. And no matter what I do, I feel the pain with or without you. It's very exciting but very scary because you don't know whether it's going to last or not. You think it's just all just going to happen all too quick and then completely drop because the minute you hit the top, there's only one way to go. You'll be back down. All I ever wanted, Disney Channel had missed out on much of the boy band boom, but sought to make up for it by landing a Backstreet Boys concert. Perlman offered in sync. That July 98 show would mark a career turning point for in sync. It was just this explosion. Kids tuned in, and if they didn't catch it the first time, they caught it the second time. And then they started to watch it over and over, and they really got to know the members of in sync. It showed a whole concert, it showed our personalities, you know, had interviews. So you really got to know, you know, in sync after watching that. And I think so many people, you know, watched it that, you know, it just totally affected everybody. And I want you. The group then grabbed the opening slot on Janet Jackson's Velvet Rope Tour early that fall, setting the stage for their own tour one month later. Touring is a bomb. Touring is when you get to see the immediate response of the stuff that, that you worked on and that people have been listening to. Performing in front of your fans every night getting to see their faces and them singing back to you your songs that you worked so hard on and just to see the, the happiness that everyone has. In I have a blast where we have like you've got TVs on the bus, we've got our video games on our bus and I, I really enjoy it. We bicker about stupid stuff like brothers do. What? What man? Get that out of my face man. You know like no, I wanted that bunk, and, you know, I had the video game five minutes ago, and I walk in and use the bathroom, and I'm going to use my video game, you know, that's messed up. I mean, we, we bicker about the, the stupidest stuff. Dude, what are you doing? Don't. What are you doing? Yeah. Tell me what you're doing. Seriously, Joey, don't. After, like, the first month of doing it every day, it just gets to you. There's no free time to have any kind of other life. But the pace would not let up. In November of 98, NSYNC released Home for Christmas, a holiday album mixing seasonal classics and new tracks. We did it in a month. I mean, we just in one month, we were on the road. And every little, you know, chance we had, we'd be in the studio just recording. We were in a studio that had two different rooms, and we were recording two, sometimes to three songs the same day. Two or three guys were recording with one producer, the other two, and then we'd switch back and forth. So half the times it was so funny to hear the album, I was like, we did that song. And Christmas came early that year for the fellas who weren't afraid of a little bling bling. First big purchase um, would probably be my car. Uh, and it was a Toyota 4Runner. It was my dream car for five years. I got two turntables and a microphone. No kidding. It's a cool microphone, too. Ah, uh, Mercedes M-Class. And I just recently bought a, um, a Beamer. Um, I think I'm developing a thing for a car. The jewelry. <laughs> Where did all this come from? Uh, Acura SLX. It's like a utility vehicle. I was... I didn't want to get like a sports car or something really, 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 you know, fancy because I didn't want to crash it up or anything. I bought a keyboard. I'm, I'm tight with my money. Coming up, the women they admire, Frank, to dance. 
to entertain an audience. What nothing could ever have prepared them for was the devotion of their young female fans. I guess sometimes they they go sometimes overboard with stuff as far as, you know, they'll stay until the next day waiting in front of the hotel lobby and everything. I'm always amazed by it, how a lot of them are so dedicated. You know more about me than I know about me. It's pretty wild sometimes, but there's a time and a place for it. It's cool when you're out on stage to have crazy loud people. And for me, that's the perfect place for it. When it's an event, it's cool. When you're trying to eat, it's okay. And of course, each fan has her favorite member. Chris is the crazy one. I feel you, you feel me, we all feel each other. Feel, 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 feel. Everybody feel each other. Chris is a roller coaster with no end to the track. I love him because he's so hot. He's got the swing on him. I love him. Lance is the business manager type. Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. No, who's there? Orange. Aren't you, aren't you glad it didn't You want to know like what NSYNC's going to do next month? I couldn't tell you. Lance, he's like, we're going to shoot this, we're going to do this, da 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 He's like all over it. I don't even know how you describe Joey. Joey is <laughs> he's special. Joey is a flirt. Boom. I love you, Justin. Marry me, baby. Justin is a... Uh, like our, our athlete, but he's also like cut up guy. He's well rounded. Justin is just multi talented. He can sing like no one else, and he's really good at basketball. I love you, JC. JC is very production oriented, he's very into the music and making sure the production's right in everything that we do. JC is the studio man, I think. He's more of a recording guy. I'm the boring guy. I just like sitting in the studio. But when they're not in the studio, what are they doing? And with whom? When it comes to the guy's girlfriends, inquiring minds want to know. But the fellas don't always want to tell. I think for the most part, we don't talk about it and we don't, you know, bring it up because it's not what people want to hear about right now. You know, people are like, people want to have this facade that, you know, we're all available, whatever. But, you know, so we don't try to take it from him, but we don't lie about it. You know, we, we tell it like it is. And if, if we have one, we'll say we have one. We just don't go in the press and say, hey, I've got a girlfriend. Let's talk about her. Life on the road is hard and you don't really get a lot of time to have a personal life. I tried having one for nine months and it just did not work out. We barely saw each other. It's a difficult situation because uh, it gets ugly after a while. Like it starts off nice and then uh, of course the schedule and everything else gets in the way. They want the attention and you can't give them the attention and then sometimes girls get jealous because you got other girls screaming at you while you're on stage. So it's it's like, it's great but it's not great. If I have a girlfriend, I want to be there for her and I want to be the best boyfriend I can be, you know, and I just cannot do that while I'm, while I'm so busy with this. I try to date as much as I can if I have the time. That's basically it. Of course, not everyone loves Joey, or in sync for that matter. Critics call them bland products of a boy band factory. I don't really worry about everybody else. I don't think you can really accept something you don't work for. I don't think it's, you know, my parents always taught me if you don't work for it, it's not worth having. I've heard a lot of things about these bubblegum factories that people say, like, we went through and things like that. I wish they would have had one of these things because there's nothing, absolutely nothing that can prepare you for what we've been through. It's, it's insanity. Now it's a little difficult to get around. I kind of have to disguise a little bit when I go out and I can't really go out anymore. Their amazing record sales helped gain and sync the industry acceptance they craved. They won two Billboard Music Awards in November of 98 and took home the Best New Pop Rock Artist Award at the American Music Awards. And the winner is... NSYNC! This is the first American Music Award for international favorites in NSYNC. Oh, 
of our family, our friends. Thank you so much, our parents. We love you guys. We won some awards in Europe and stuff like that, and that's very exciting. But to have an award in our hometown, you know, in our state, you know, the United States, have an award, an American Music Award, too, for that matter, is, is exciting because it was just like we just came out. And to have that is just amazing. I have it on my shelf. Every time I walk by, I'm like, that's mine. I must have spent a little more time than you. Bands in other musical genres noted in sync success as well. The veteran country outfit Alabama covered an in sync track on their new album, 20th Century, and asked the boys to sing along with them. I grew up, you know, in Tennessee and around country music, so, you know, they're legendary to, in my eyes. It was a great song, and it's a proven hit, so, you know, you don't have to worry about that end of it. Having the opportunity to work with somebody like Alabama in the studio, we were, weren't going to pass it up. You never know what you've done for me. Later, the boys would have the opportunity to record with superstar Gloria Estevan for the lead song on the soundtrack to the film Music of the Heart. Gloria Estevan is just an incredible lady. She, she could be the sixth member of NSYNC. It's a great song, one of those, you know, epic ballads. It was really a huge highlight of our career. NSYNC would top off the year with a vigorous performance at the 1999 Video Music Awards. It would reunite Justin and JC with their Mickey Mouse Club pal, Britney Spears. We totally re-choreographed the whole song and, um, and then asked Britney Spears to do it with us. And it was, it was a great collaboration because we had this whole school set and all these students and everything. And I don't know how the audience perceived it because everyone at the end of the whole routine, everyone was like, wow. What just happened? You know, it was just totally went over everyone's head because they weren't expecting that. It was just so different that everyone, like, afterwards was like, that was really great, but wow. That day, 9999 had more surprises in store for NSYNC, and not just because of their performance. That was the day the band members quietly made a risky decision that would change the course of their career. They would end their relationship with manager Lou Pearlman and leave their record company. Baby, bye, bye, bye. They wanted to, uh, in their minds, get a little better deal than they were, and uh, they were given another offer from uh, Jive Records. And uh, obviously BMG and the RCA were not happy about it, and uh, we were caught in the middle, and we had to uh, kind of help try to fix it. When we come back, the men of NSYNC face their greatest crisis head on and triumph with no strings attached. P99, the men of NSYNC cruise into the Video Music Awards, give a rousing performance with Britney Spears, and raise the roof at a raucous after party. But their good humor conceals their concerns at the imminent end of their business relationship with Lou Pearlman, who had given the group its start. 
We learned a lot from Lou and just in the beginning. Just talking over like percentages and, and how things work, how management deals work, how record deals work. He kind of helped us out and guide us and everything and gave us like the financial backing and everything. He said, if you guys, if you guys want to do this stuff, you know, I got the money. So we were like, okay, you know, money for nothing. We, we, we took it. And uh, of course, it's never for nothing. The group decided to bolt BMG and sign with Jive, but were slapped with a $150 million lawsuit by Lewis Perlman, who began to assert rights to the NSYNC name. In a responding legal document, Chassé called Perlman an unscrupulous, greedy, and sophisticated businessman, who, while hugging us and calling us family, was picking our pockets, robbing us of our future, and even endangering our health. An apparent reference to the collapse of Lance Bass during a 1999 tour. They tried to uh, move over to this other record label, and uh, we're caught in the middle because we presented them to uh, the first record label. So, needless to say, it's kind of a, a stalemate at the moment, but I think no one wins if we don't sell records. The legal dispute endangered both the group's new record and NSYNC itself. We are painfully aware our careers may be short, Chassé declared, but just before Christmas 99, a settlement was reached with NSYNC retaining the right to record and release music under the name NSYNC. We had a little court battle that went on over our name and over some other things, and now we've washed our hands from this point. We're with the new record label, and basically, it's all been squashed. We're about to release a new album, so to us, that's a victory. Bye, bye, bye. With the legal hassles now behind them, NSYNC was finally set to release their sophomore album, appropriately entitled No Strings Attached. Well, the name of the album is No Strings Attached. We feel like there's nothing that you know can hold us down anymore. We're really coming into our own. This album is explosive. It feels like every song is just packed with like a keg of gunpowder. album for everyone you know everyone can find something they like on this album every song on this album is like worth going out to buy the record that's what's great about this album that's what we're most proud about this album it's not like you know when you pick up an album i hate skipping songs man you're like this song you don't have to skip any the first single off the album is the upbeat dance pop cut bye 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 it's got a little more edge to it it's got a little more urban flavor to it, and, you know, this is just a taste of, you know, what's going to come on the album, but, you know, it's one of those songs that it's got that hook and you hear it once and, you know, you hear it for, like, the next two days in your head. And would use Bye 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 to illustrate the concept of No Strings Attached. The concept pretty much came actually from the idea of having this woman kind of controlling us on strings and we happen to break free. We get cut from the strings and we're running away from her. And it's just really cool because we use a lot of different effects that we've done by, you know, hanging ourselves from wires and having a rotating room and running on top of train cars, you know, high speed car chases. 15 miles per hour. Basically, this chick is a control freak, man. You're getting out of town. Sync found itself writing about half of No Strings Attached. They also chose to collaborate with an eclectic group of producers and writers, from Teddy Riley to Richard Marks. Even band member J.C. Chassé himself acted as producer for some of the tracks on the album. Creatively, we're like soldiers in the studio. So, I mean, when we get in the studio and we work with all these different producers and writers and even the stuff that we've written ourselves, you know, we just, things just start happening. It's, it's magical. Ideas don't get shut down, they get approved upon. Yeah. That's basically Everybody what happens. Are, yeah. It's like, I got this idea, okay, well then if we take your idea and then we do this to it, you know, and it's like, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what makes your idea better in the first place, is taking it to the next oh, level. That's, what, and that's I mean, what we do for each other. That's what our group's all about. What's next for NSYNC? The new year brings a new outlook for the band, 
and a high energy tour to follow. We want our audience to be entertained. <laughs> yeah, to, to enjoy themselves and to feel like they're part of the show. You know, I took that into consideration when we put our show together. And Every time out, you know, you try to just improve and go to the next level, and that's what, we, what we've done with this album. We feel we do the music that makes us happy. And uh, we have a big year ahead of us, and we've got no strings to hold us down. But even as their bright future awaits, the men of NSYNC haven't forgotten to be grateful. You know, we like where we're at now, you know, comfortable in the in the music and, you know, and being together and just dropping tunes. And I'm real happy where I'm at right now. I used to pray every day, you know, for something like this to happen to me. I, I never knew it would be this big, but it was definitely fate. It was just like the minute we sang together, it just, we knew we had something. You have to just kind of sit back and just, you know, pinch yourself every day and and just thank God, you know, all the experiences that have happened in our life have happened just like a storybook so far. We're five, you know, little kids from all over the country that, have, that met in Orlando and we were just blessed with this opportunity and we're taking it and running with it. Yeah.